Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Martin Valley Community College. This is for CSIT 256, Computer Architecture and Assembly Language. And uh, this video is going to, um, I'm sorry, this is accompanying Stallings Chapter 3. And this video is going to focus on the hypothetical uh, machine so we can see how, uh, get a rough idea of how the processor works. Um, so what I have here, it looks closer to, um, well, that's a little closer. That's a line of Java code. So total sold equals apple sold plus uh, orange sold. Um, and so if we had in memory, you know, for apple sold being eight, orange sold being six, um, then if after this statement was executed in Java, total sold would have um, E. Well, that's the hex. 14 is what it would be, which is E uh, in, in hex. Um, and one of the things we'll have to um, get accustomed to is things that were one statement in Java become multiple statements in assembly language. Um, but first, we're going to look at this hypothetical machine. And the idea in this hypothetical machine, um, it's going to have, we're just going to deal with a small instruction set uh, for now. So first, the instruction. So when, when um, an instruction is in memory, the first four bits for this hypothetical machine is going to be the opcode. So what is the operation? And the next 12 bits would be what address um, is this um, opcode uh, uh, referring to? Um, and so what will happen is um, that this will get fetched onto the processor. It will figure out what that is, um, and it will carry out the instruction. Um, now. What's over here um, is sort of, um, uh, this is the stuff that's in the book. It is represented it differently, but this would almost be like a language reference. Um, so LD for load, that would be the mnemonic. Uh, MEM would be the uh, memory location. Um, and how, um, well, well, for example, so this LD3A7, um, that would be what we would write in terms of like our editor. And then when a compile takes place, we would get the underlying binary. Now, here just representing it in terms of um, hex. Uh, but kind of like, for example, here, this, this LD940, uh, um, which the, that's the hex uh, um, address uh, in the binary. So the, the LD gets translated into 0001. And, well, the, the 940, I mean, that's just a hex, so that's the uh, binary equivalent of that hex uh, value. So for our hypothetical language we have right now, there's a load which uh, loads the accumulator um, from memory. So given a memory address, it'll load into the accumulator. Uh, another command, the ST for store, will take what's in the accumulator and store it to memory. Um, a third command, um, the AD, is going to add to the accumulator from uh, memory. Um, and so let's step through and then see um, for this um, line of Java that we had, um, we want to take the apple sold and we want to bring it into the accumulator. So here the LD, which is to load the accumulator from memory, the LD940 would be the equivalent of taking the apple sold and bring it into the accumulator. This AD941, well, we want to take the orange sold and add it into the accumulator. So in that case, that would add in the 6, so we'd have E or 14 in our accumulator. And then ST, we would store it to uh, our total sold, 942. So then the value would be written um, out uh, to memory. So using the um, hypothetical language, so the the equivalent of, of this that we would have in Java would be LD940, um, AD941, ST942. Now in assembler, just taking a peek ahead, um, instead of us using the hex references for the memory, um, we'll be able to actually use variables very much the way Java does. But we still have to go through these three steps. 
Um, so we'll see in the assembler, we're going to load EAX. And by the way, another name for the EAX, it's an accumulator. Load EAX with apple salt, add to EAX the orange salt. So at that point, EAX will have the total of the two. Um, and then what we'll do is store that to memory using the uh, move statement. Um, okay, so um, what I want to do is step through doing the fetch and the execute of this um, uh, hypothetical language, this program. The program I'm about to run here, um, it's the same program here. So we're, um, um, anyway, so when we're beginning, the program counter. Now the program counter is saying what is the next instruction that is to be um, carried out. And that 300 means it's referring to this instruction here. So that's the next one that would be um, carried out. This part down here, this is the data. Um, so our data, um, so our logically our apple sold, orange sold, and total sold are at these three memory uh, locations. Um, Okay, so on a fetch, so when a fetch takes place, what um, the processor will do is say, okay, well, let's look at 300, let's go there, and let's grab that instruction and bring it onto the CPU. Now, I'm just going to just show this in hex just to be a little bit easier, but the binary is, is going to be loaded. So the instruction register is going to become 1, that's the opcode, and the IBR instruction buffer register will be the 940. Immediately after a fetch, the program counter is incremented. Um, so we're still working on this instruction that we're on right now, but once a fetch, uh, an instruction is fetched, the program counter is automatically incremented, meaning the next um, instruction that we're going to carry out um, will be at 301. But we're still working on this one. So the decode will figure out, well, what does 1 mean? Well, it's load from, uh, well, the address that we have, uh, which is the 940. Well, 940 is um, here. And so what will happen is temporarily, and I'm not going to show every single little step here, um, but the 8 is going to would go temporarily. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. The 8 would temporarily go into the MBR. Remember, this statement is loading from what's at 940 into the accumulator. So this is going to become 0008, um, and that's the result of the execute of this um, first uh, statement. Okay, so um, now that that um, statement is done, um, we'll go on to um, the beginning of the cycle again. The beginning of the cycle um, does a fetch from where the program counter is, and the program counter is pointing to 301, which has the, um, well, this bit string, which is the hex equivalent, is 5941. Um, so that instruction is fetched. So the 5 is brought in. The 941 is brought in. And immediately on the fetch, the program counter is incremented, saying the next instruction after this one uh, will be the um, um, 302. Um, okay, so when it decodes what's in the instruction register, the 5, it says add to the accumulator um, the value that's in the memory here. Um, so it goes to 941. The value that's there, uh, well, this is the binary equivalent, but it's the value 6. So that 6 is brought into the memory buffer register. Now when it carries out the add to the accumulator, that 6 is added onto the accumulator, which currently has 8. And so that now becomes 14. 6 plus 8 is 14, and E is the um, hex um, equivalent of that. So that finishes then um, that second instruction in terms of the execution. So we go back to the instruction cycle, and first thing we do is a fetch. Well, the program counter is pointing here, um, and so it'll fetch that instruction. So this bit stream is what will come in. The hex equivalent is the 2942. Um, so this will come in the 2, the 942. And because we just did a fetch, the program counter is incremented. Um, okay, so now 
um, when it decodes this, it figures out, well, what it's doing is taking what's in the accumulator, it's E, and it's storing it to 942. Well, 942 is here, and so what will happen is um, that E is going to be written out to memory. So the storing, and I'll, I'll do it uh, twofold, um, so the E, um, that's E. <laughs> so the E that was in the accumulator is written out to memory, and our 942, um, the address 942, which logically is our total sold, now has the value 14, uh, which the hex equivalent is um, E. Um, by the way, one of the things I, I had pointed out um, was that you need the exit statement at the end of your main method, and if you don't have the exit statement, um, the program will continue running. And that's the idea behind it, is that if we don't eventually stop, it'll keep fetching what's in memory, bring it onto the processor, and try to carry it out. Which, in theory, I mean, if the program doesn't bomb before then, in theory, it could keep running until you actually get your data segment. Um, well, that was more in the old days, and now they're separate enough that one wouldn't go to the other. But you could get a memory violation if your program then steps out of memory, um, or the command that's being carried out is a really bad command. Um, so it's, it's very important to make sure that we have an end for our program. Um, otherwise, it will keep running um, what's after it. And just to peek back to, um, oops, sorry, let's try to bring this into view. Um, so in terms of, and we'll see this again in the Irvine um, um, ch chapter three, um, but this would be the assembly that we're going to be using, the equivalent of it. So the apple sold is going to have eight. The orange sold is going to have six. The total sold is uninitialized. Question mark is uninitialized. Um, and then here are the, are the statements. Load the apple sold into EAX, which is our accumulator. Add to the accumulator what's in orange sold. And then take what's in EAX and then store it to memory. Um, so just for um, letting you guys know that this exercise that we're going through um, is to get us um, roughly in the idea of what has to go behind the scenes, that we're um, you know, loading data into the CPU in order to um, have it carry out. Um, now, what the slides from the author has, um, it's not the exact problem that I just went through, but there's a similar one. And now, since I edited this thing in place, when we look at it right now, this is the result of the uh, after 302 is executed. It's it's the uh, the end result. What the author has is he has this table that kind of shows well. Here's the fetch and execute of the first statement. Here's the fetch and execute of the second statement. Here's the fetch and execute of the third statement. Um, and so this table is kind of showing um, how things uh, change. It's more like doing snapshots. I didn't do any snapshots of what I had here, and so when we're looking at this, we're only seeing the, the final result. So the architecture lab that you guys are going to be working on, um, we're going to expand the hypothetical um, uh, language. We're going to add some commands to it, um, and then what we're going to do is follow through those uh, commands as well. So the architecture lab, um, you'll be kind of doing what I did here, but you're going to make snapshots of what um, things look like, um, you know, after the fetch, what does it look like? After the execute, what does it look like? Next instruction, after the fetch, what does it look like? After the execute, what does it look like? All right, so uh, that's enough for this hypothetical machine.